thank you very much for the introduction uh, and for inviting me uh, to uh, present uh, my work and uh, um, and knowledge on uh, sustainability uh, and exporting. Uh, today we will discuss sustainability within the context of uh, exporting, um, but uh, before we move forward, a few things about me. Uh, first of all, um, I have a background in, um, um, in business administration. I've done an MBA and then a PhD. Uh, I've been for many years at the University of Leeds, Leeds University Business School. I'm currently a professor of marketing and business administration at the Open University of Cyprus and also the academic coordinator of the MBA program uh, at the Open University of Cyprus. Uh, I have expertise in sustainability, international marketing, marketing and management. I'm also associate editor of uh, general business research for the CSR and business ethics track and uh, a, a member of the editorial review board of general of international marketing, but also on the board of directors for the AMA global marketing special interest group. Uh, I also have a family background in business. My uh, granddad, uh, my, my grandfather um, used to have a factory producing furniture, importing and exporting, and my father uh, is in the uh, furniture business as well. So I grew up in factories, I grew up in SMEs, and, uh, um, and I know the struggles and, uh, and um, the, uh, the issues and the challenges faced uh, by exporters and importers in the area. Uh, before we move forward, I think it's, um, you know, when I was de developing this, um, this presentation uh, and preparing for this presentation, uh, I tried to, um, you know, to synthesize um, knowledge and information uh, in order to uh, provide you with uh, something that um, um, you will be able to take forward and um, and, and uh, use um, um, later on. So starting with sustainability. Uh, so in terms of sustainability, we first heard about the word sustainability um, around in the 1980s. I was a baby at the time, uh, but the United Nations um, uh, decided to uh, task uh, the Norwegian Prime Minister, Dr. Bratland, with um, 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 you know, the, um, the task of developing an understanding about uh, what is sustainability and what is sustainable development and try to understand whether there have been any links of human activity with the state of, uh, um, uh, you know, the planet. And uh, that famous report that was um, uh, published in 1987 uh, uh, linked um, uh, for the very first time natural environment, human social welfare and economic activity together and recognized that there are biospheric limits to human activity. Uh, at the time, sustainability was defined as meeting the needs of the present without com compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. And that report was focused on the importance of understanding that people have needs, of the equity uh, of um, uh, meeting those needs, the importance of different generations enjoying and fulfilling those needs, but importantly for us here, the global element of sustainability, that the issue is not only relevant in the United Kingdom, Cyprus or France, but it's of global importance and of global relevance. Everyone is affected. If we do something in one place, someone else might be affected in another place. So that was the very first time that um, a report uh, documented something so big and so uniformly accepted by individuals. Now, in terms of sustainability, um, it can be considered as a megatrend today. It's one of the great challenges of our time. Um, and climate change in particular is one of the world's most pressing problems uh, today. Um, and um, governments are trying to uh, promise um, ambitious cuts um, in um, you know, cutting down warming gases uh, in order to prevent greater global temperature rises. Uh, as uh, Etienne mentioned at the beginning, 
uh, you know, we uh, this presentation is very timely because of COP26, uh, where world leaders uh, promised to end deforestation by 2030, and the countries who have signed the pledge, including Canada, Brazil, Russia, China, Indonesia, uh, US, the UK, covered around 85% of the world's forests. That's very significant. Uh, and at the same time, we see a lot of changes in the global market. We see car manufacturers like Volvo uh, um, committing that they go fully electric by 2030. We see the European Union uh, proposing an effective ban on uh, petrol and diesel cars by 2035. Uh, we see the, um, you know, more than 30 of the world's biggest financial companies like Aviva, Schroders, EXA, uh, promising to end investment in activities like deforestation, but also for climate change. So all these are creating um, very big, um, um, a very big um, um, discussion around sustainability and pressure points for different organizations, including exporters. So. Uh, in terms of uh, the interest for sustainability has gone through the roof globally. There are many people around the world that are discussing sustainability as we speak at the moment. And um, in order to go further, we first need to understand the situation where we're in and then try to see how we can um, make changes uh, to our situation to improve things further down. We also need to understand consumers, different stakeholders, uh, in order for us to design more effective sustainability programs from the business uh, perspective. So when it comes to sustainable development, usually, uh, this is a slide that I show uh, to my students, uh, when we're trying to understand what is sustainable development, and usually we can classify sustainable development as part of the three pillars of economy, society, and the environment. And under each of these pillars, you see different issues that we can address and think uh, from a sustainability perspective. For example, when we're talking about the economy, it can be about our uh, energy use. It can be about our technology, um, about our production and consumption, about uh, prosperity and material standards of living. When we talk about society, we're talking about challenging issues like poverty, social inclusion, uh, education, equality, diversity, culture, and so on. We're talking about the environment, we're talking about pollution, we're talking about water resources, about climate change, about waste, about biodiversity. All these are issues that fall under the umbrella the umbrella of uh, sustainable development. And of course, the United Nations um, came up with um, a blueprint uh, for sustainable development. It came up with a number of goals, 17 to be more specific, uh, that focus on different areas uh, to achieve a better and more sustainable future for everyone. Uh, so these, um, um, these goals uh, try to address global challenges that we currently face, like poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace and justice, and so on. And these are interconnected goals, they're not standalone goals. And these are uh, what uh, I see today as um, a big one uh, for many uh, organizations, governments, in terms of fulfilling the sustainable development goals uh, that the, they might have been uh, setting uh, from the beginning. Uh, another uh, frequent um, um, way uh, that I'm using in terms of understanding sustainability is the triple bottom line and the concept of the triple bottom line. You can see in this slide here that focuses on economic performance, environmental performance, and social performance. And it's basically the attempt to take sustainable development from a macro focus, from a, from a societal focus, from an economy focus, to more to the level of the business and try to um, look at this triple bottom line uh, or 3BL uh, as a way to um, uh, improve the sustainability uh, aspects of the sustainable performance organizations. Um, um, my students also frequently use the 3P uh, terminology, which is people, planet, and profit um, to describe the, the, the triple bottom line. Now, 
while it's very useful for us to um, you know, understand the triple bottom line, it's also very important for us to understand that sustainability is linked with disruption. Now, if you look at this, uh, this figure here, um, the concept of disruption is usually um, it can be tied with uh, renovation and innovation. While renovation focuses on improving existing processes and products and um, restaging pricing and launching new pack sizes and making tactical changes in your product or process, uh, innovation focuses more on um, um, the creation of new subcategories, the creation of new products, the creation of new ideas within the existing categories, more of like uh, the incremental innovation that we see today, or a fusion between incremental and less radical innovation. If you think about sustainability, it's a very disruptive idea. Uh, why? Because uh, it focuses on the creation of entirely new categories or markets and the ideas that are tied with sustainability can really disrupt the whole market. Let's take the car uh, industry as an example. Uh, the idea of sustainability will transform the way cars are going to be designed and operate in the future. So it's something that pushes uh, marketers, pushes uh, business people uh, to think in a different way in, in order to solve a particular problem by thinking differently. So many people frequently forget that sustainability is linked with disruption. And for me, um, sustainability is one of the biggest disruptions that businesses have faced in the last 50 years. Uh, of course, we have COVID-19, which uh, is competing at the time, but very soon COVID-19 is going to go away. Uh, sustainability and climate change and problems associated with uh, climate change will stay for us for a longer period of time. So because of this and because of the our lack of understanding, lack of experience in dealing with these issues is the first time that humankind has tried to understand these issues and has tried to provide solutions to these issues, then it becomes more difficult for us to find solutions that are going to be effective solutions and can be implemented by many different companies around the world. It requires a mindset change, which is very difficult. Now, moving on with some um, recent um, uh, market insights. So, um, you know, many people said that, um, well, with COVID-19, things will uh, disappear um, about sustainability. People will be focusing on other things. Well, uh, in terms of, um, um, you know, 2021, uh, Credit Suisse uh, came up with a survey and uh, came up with uh, these uh, statistics about, um, um, you know, for a question, for instance, about environmental concerns, do environmental concerns influence your spending decisions? You can see many people from India, many people from um, uh, Turkey, many people uh, from uh, Brazil uh, answering significantly influence the decision activity. Sustainability considerations will be a factor for consumers in the future, as we can see currently, but also in the future, as we can see from this slide here. Also, an interesting finding of this study is that both younger and older consumers equally increased their spending on healthy food since the outbreak of COVID-19. So this is a like, very interesting shift um, uh, in terms of um, uh, changes in the market when it comes to sustainability and sustainable products. Uh, in terms of um, um, market trends, you can also see that the segmentation uh, in the market uh, it comprises of three different categories. We have the eco-actives uh, who are more into sustainability and feel an increasing responsibility to be more sustainable. We have the eco-considerers -consider, uh, uh, where they're thinking about the sustainability issue from a more rational perspective, thinking about whether it makes sense financially to do something about, um, uh, about, uh, about sustainability and whether it's convenient or not. And also the echo dismisses that they don't want to hear or listen to anything about sustainability. And we can see that there is a gradual shift towards 
more eco-actives and more eco-considerants and less eco-dismissives. So the acceptance of sustainability is going up um, you know, throughout the years. And the projection when it comes to eco-actives is that by 2030, more than 50% of the market will comprise of eco-actives. So the trend is moving into that direction. And if you're thinking, okay, how does uh, e-COVID-19 uh, influence uh, the situation? Uh, you know, the answer is it acted as a catalyst to the whole situation uh, because people, uh, when they thought about how quickly, a pan, you know, a, a, a health issue can spread throughout the world, uh, then people started to think about environmental catastrophes and other environmental issues as well, and what these might do to their personal day-to-day -day life. It became more close to them as an idea. And we can see from this slide, um, uh, even a large share of dismissives think it is more important, with only 10% of dismissives thinking it is less important, um, you know, the issue of sustainability today. So many people during the pandemic have changed and, and, uh, and uh, reinforced uh, their ideas about sustainability, which is very important for us to acknowledge and understand. When it comes to uh, the COVID-19 crisis, consumers have already changed their behavior to achieve sustainability goals. So we see people now um, um, opting to uh, more durable goods, uh, opting to repair goods, uh, opting to find ways to um, uh, use or reuse some of the items that, the, uh, that they wanted, or they want some of the goods to last for longer because they don't want to go to shop, they, want to, they don't want to go and mingle with individuals. Uh, and, you know, this is the general trend that we see today after uh, COVID-19, which is very important to know. Now, when it comes to practices, what does it mean for a company? What does it mean for an exporter, for instance? Well, sustainability means basically uh, changes in many different areas of the organization. We're talking about impro uh, improving existing or developing new products and services with uh, sustainability credentials. We're talking about changes in your supply chain, how you select your suppliers, how you select your raw materials. Um, we're talking about uh, changing in logistics and distribution, the location of your depot. We need to focus on carbon dioxide emissions. We need to focus on how you service your market. We're talking about investments in terms of promotion, in terms of image, improving the image, and that as a result moves to an increase in demand and production um, because of the increased publicity of firms. We're talking about technologies, new technology. We're talking about new, more efficient machinery. Uh, we're talking about, um, um, you know, collaboration, government schemes, uh, government support schemes, uh, public purchasing programs, uh, process improvements in terms of becoming more efficient, um, offering solutions to customers for after use arrangements. So um, a lot of many, many times, particularly with, um, with products that are exported, we just export the goods, it, it reaches the, the different country, and then it ends there, it doesn't end there. We need to think about how our customers are going to use that product and what are they going to do with that product after they're done using it. So this is something that we need to think as part of uh, integrating sustainability within your business operations. We need to think about pricing. If uh, there is a cost for clearing up the product after use, we can integrate that into the product price. Um, so this is something that we can think about. Uh, in terms of community, uh, it's not only where we manufacture the goods, in France, for instance, or in the UK, uh, it's also the community that people are buying our products in different countries. And also, importantly, and specifically for exporters, it's uh, critical to stand out from the competition. Um, Exporters are usually more small in terms of size, therefore they don't have that kind of economies of scale that very big multinational corporations have. 
So cost advantage is very difficult to achieve. Uh, and because of that, differentiation is a way to go with sustainability in order to stand out from the crowd in export markets. Now, in terms of um, research, I do research in sustainability and export. But for the, for the purpose of this um, uh, seminar or presentation, I took a very good look at the literature. I summarized pretty much all the exporting literature on sustainability to date in terms of what do the findings say about sustainability. And it says that, uh, first of all, that um, integrating sustainability in exporting pays off. Uh, and that has been empirically validated by many different studies in the field, focusing on export firms uh, from different countries. So we have concepts such as uh, sustainable product attributes, sustainability management, green business strategy, eco-friendly expo marketing strategy, and so on and so forth. And the literature says that there are financial market uh, and export intensity benefits. Um, uh, of firms engaged in more in greater sustainability. How does that happen? You might be thinking. Uh, so uh, the answer is uh, lies in terms of market gains and cost savings. For some of the things that we're doing from a sustainability perspective, we are gaining market share. We're gaining market, uh, new markets, new customers, um, increasing acceptability of our product and service from our customers. For some other things that we're doing within the sustainability domain, we are and um, we are gaining savings from a cost perspective in terms of more efficient processes, uh, more efficient, uh, um, um, you know, way of production or distributing etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and of course we have uh, the differentiation approach that offers a unique advantage to uh, exporters in comparison to other products that might not have that kind of uh, advantage uh, to differentiate and stand from the crowd um, another uh, reason why this is happening is because Firms who are trying to do that, they're generating a set of capabilities that can facilitate export processes for small firms. For instance, capacity to innovate, capacity to understand stakeholders, capacity to um, uh, know uh, things and engage in knowledge creation uh, and dissemination, um, managing reputation, but most importantly, managing with flexibility and agility. So these are some of the arguments that uh, my colleagues have uh, shared uh, uh, as part of the link of sustainability with export performance. And of course, there are many firms that are commanding premiums uh, for their products. And a case in point is a very recent purchase of my water dispenser, uh, where, where I visited two different firms uh, with imported goods, uh, one from China and one from Korea. Uh, and um, well, the first water dispenser was 400 euros, uh, and the second was 700 euros. Uh, and the price premium was um, uh, was justified on the basis of uh, certifications, on the basis of lower um, energy usage costs uh, throughout the period of the life of the uh, of the product, and also uh, in terms of certifications in in the way that the product was manufactured and the ingredients used. So these were the, uh, some of the arguments that the salesperson was using to sell that particular product to me, the more expensive one, not the least expensive one. Uh, so um, I'm, all, I'm already saying that this is already happening in the market. We can see this uh, with different products. Another avenue of reaching export performance with sustainability is through intervening. Um, uh, variables, variables that mediate the mechanism between sustainability and export performance. Basically, what these guys are saying here um, are that uh, when you have sustainability, it can create a differentiation advantage that will lead to export performance. And also, what I said earlier about knowledge integration, it helps you build more knowledge to create better products, more effective products than that of the competition, and therefore uh, lead to a greater export performance into the market. Uh, when it comes to cost advantage, while it works for multinational firms or domestic firms, there was a finding that it doesn't work for exporters. 
for different reasons. Um, uh, one might be because of the size argument that uh, was provided earlier. Uh, so that's it's better for exporting firms to focus on achieving differentiation as opposed to competing through cost advantage through the sustainability business model. When it comes to interaction, there are different variables that can change positively or negatively the, um, uh, the relationship between sustainability and export performance. It is basically um, um, uh, the answer to the question, does it pay to be sustainable? Uh, that's when people are saying it depends. Uh, it depends because it pays more uh, when um, the firm is uh, larger in terms of size. It, it pays more when there is um, market public concern for sustainability in the foreign market, when there is high competitive intensity in the foreign market, when you have a sustainable culture in the first place to support your strategies and activities in sustainability and translate that to enhanced performance. And also when you have a cost leadership approach within your organization it also helps uh, maximizing the effects. Uh, strangely, when you have a green product differentiation approach, it kind of uh, influences negatively the relationship between sustainability and export performance. And something else that is very important to mention here, uh, a finding of a recent study says that the effect of CSR and export performance seems to be contingent on the market scope. Firms that focus on a small group of developed country markets will be more successful in increasing their export performers, export performers using CSR than exporters which direct their exports to a large number of countries or focus on developing economies. So in other words, when um, you're targeting developed countries, the effect is even stronger than when you're focusing on developing countries and also when you have more concentrated market portfolio that's also very effective, more conducive to the achievement of higher export performance. Now when it comes to uh, triggers, so what are the triggers for um, an exporting firm to engage into sustainability? Well, uh, the literature says that you need to have resources in place that are triggering sustainability or particularly helpful in developing sustainability. It's very good to have capabilities in place in place uh, in order for you to be able to um, uh, develop these strategies. Um, you need to have good stakeholder management skills, but also is pushed by the different stakeholder concerns. Um, culture is very important with the organization it, it, because it helps provide a purpose as to why you're doing different things. Uh, the top management is very important in terms of uh, um, facilitating different changes that might be needed. Uh, competition, public concern, technology, and of course, regulations are um, very frequently used as drivers or triggers of sustainability uh, for uh, big but also uh, small companies within the area. Now, uh, in a recent study that we did, relatively recent, some years ago, uh, we examined the issue of standardization versus adaptation of your sustainability practices. Because we have observed that many countries, many exporters, when they are entering new markets, they change their practice, particularly with sustainability marketing in place. And our findings show that uh, it's very important uh, to understand that there is no one size fits all. You cannot standardize or adapt. Uh, rather than the answer depends on fitting your, your existing strategy with macro and micro environmental forces within the country that you're exporting. Uh, and one implication of this study is that managers responsible for sustainable export marketing strategies need to be more able to develop proactive approaches rather than simply following local sustainability reg regulation. Why? Because if you do that, then the difference might be very visible between different markets and this will not be um, 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 you know, kept secret. Therefore, 
uh, there might create some kind of controversy. So it's very important uh, to uh, think about this feed issue within these markets. Uh, another um, uh, argument when it comes to sustainability in exporting is about export intensity. So there is um, a group of scholars that they say that it's not only export performance that is very important here. Exporting can also justify uh, why firms might be engaging in CSR on sustainability. And there, has been, there have been studies that uh, have focused on the link between uh, export intensity of the organization with product level CSR, firm level CSR, and green innovations from the company. Um, and, and the argument was that uh, as uh, companies go out and they learn more things from different markets that they operate, they take some of this information back into the headquarter, back into uh, uh, the home country, and then they try to develop approaches about products, changes for products, uh, but also uh, innovations within the organization. Uh, uh, this uh, um, stream of research didn't find any link with firm level CSR, uh, which is um, very significant and needs to be mentioned. On top of that, the literature says the importance of um, conducting life cycle approaches when it comes to your product and services, understanding and using uh, um, knowledge and expertise. Um, it's very critical to establish good uh, relationships and ties and also have uh, management systems and certification in place uh, when it comes to sustainability. Now, I took the liberty of uh, drafting some uh, recommendations uh, as a result of um, uh, the volume of uh, knowledge and uh, information that we can gather from the literature. Uh, the first thing um, that we need to understand is that you cannot implement sustainability programs without strong leadership. So if you want to uh, integrate sustainability, you need to uh, lead uh, that very strongly and you need to um, take people with you to share that kind of vision and understanding about sustainability. You need to show your commitment. You need to uh, show that uh, sustainability is very important and you need to show that with actions. Um, when it comes to uh, sustainability, play the long game. It's not something that you can quickly do and reap the benefits and then move to a different issues. It's a long game and you need to uh, carefully develop your strategies and practices, change your practices and slowly and gradually get to the end game uh, that uh, uh, you want to achieve. Uh, when it comes to sustainability, particularly from an exporter's perspective, uh, it's very critical to understand, meet, and exceed, in many cases, stakeholder expectations. So the first B is to understand them. To understand them, you need to discuss with them. You need to try to put yourself into their shoes to see where they're coming from. Meet is to see what kind of available options um, um, are available to you in order to help them um, and alleviate some of their concerns. And in some cases, if you can, it's very beneficial to exceed these expectations and go one step further. Why? Because we saw that differentiation is the way to go for exporters when it comes to sustainability. Uh, try to develop knowledge and expertise either by inviting people to consult or provide information um, about sustainability if you don't have that kind of knowledge and expertise in place um, you you can tap into resources um, and uh, try to get funding uh, or um, uh, expertise and knowledge from external sources within the organization try to seize opportunities or schemes that the government uh, um, um, you know, in different places might be putting forward. We need to remember here that governments around the world have this on the top of the agenda. So they will be coming out with schemes and uh, ways to motivate and help individuals and companies to uh, engage in greater sustainable development in the future. And also, another way to go is to form smart partnerships with local or international players to help in terms of uh, enforcing sustainability or integrating sustainability into your organization. Very important, measure things. Before you do anything, measure things, report, 
measure, report, and so on and so forth. Many people start doing, let's do this, let's do that, but they don't establish the, you know, the initial field in order to understand what they're doing, and what effect is this that they're doing to their operations and to their business, but also to the other stakeholders. So it's very important to do that. Another thing you need to go with is to try to embed sustainability within your culture as opposed to just a document and a policy that you're going to circulate that by email and say, let's try to do that. Because sustainability is not something that you will do, it's something that you have to think constantly in different things. You have to think differently, as I said at the beginning of the session, because this is a disruptive approach, um, not um, um, uh, a rethinking approach of different things. And frequently try to, access, to assess progress and recalibrate. If things doesn't work, change things. Introduce new ideas, fresh ideas. And remember, Rome was not built uh, in a day. So don't feel pressure to let's change everything together. Slow steps um, towards uh, the main goal uh, which you have to set. And some people, uh, you know, say that. Um, particularly when COVID-19 came up, say, oh, you know, that's, um, that's um, you know, going to be the, the end of sustainability. Now we'll have to deal with, uh, with COVID-19. Sustainability is not going to be on the agenda anymore. Well, we need to take some learning points from COVID-19. Uh, previously unthinkable approaches um, became the new normal overnight. Um, at least we had to change uh, the way we have been teaching for many, many years uh, over in, in three days. Over a weekend, we changed the way that we have been delivering knowledge to our students. Uh, and if we were able to do that and companies were able to change their business practices, it means that we can really do a lot of things if we put our money into this. Uh, so um, the, the argument, I can't do it, it's very difficult to be um, digested here. Uh, so with this, we can see that uh, many things can be done to reduce travel, for instance. Uh, we also saw many companies going the extra mile to reward their people, to care for their people, particularly in COVID-19. And people is part of sustainable development. You need to treat people with respect. You need to uh, understand where they're coming from and offer them health and safe workplaces for them to do their job. So, uh, so in, during the pandemic, a lot of companies show their human side and uh, understood the difficulties and the situation that many people were going through. This can be part of sustainability agenda too. Unilever, for instance, provided early payment for its more vulnerable suppliers uh, because they realized that they were under pressure during the period. That's um, um, an action that, if you think about it, uh, it means a lot to these suppliers and it builds further into that kind of relationship. But also, the pandemic showed something else, the negative side, that many firms, despite the fact that governments um, and people around the world have been warning uh, for a global event like that. Many companies were caught unprepared. Uh, and not only companies, even governments uh, were caught unprepared. Um, and uh, this lack of adaptability and resilience was a problem in crisis management. What if, you know, there is a very big catastrophe that uh, you know, threatens a particular city, for instance. How can we move forward? How can we change this very quickly to adjust to this changing, um, um, you know, uh, changing environment around us? So it's something that we will need to think um, in terms of preparing uh, for the various climate change scenarios that are uh, available to us. So COVID-19. Um, created a, a problem, and we still see this problem around us in terms of the economy, in terms of increase in energy prices, energy and food prices around the world. It's not in Europe, everywhere. Uh, but at the same time, we can use that as food for thought and open new doors for the future in terms of how we manage crisis and how we deal with situations uh, uh, like that in, in the future. 
Uh, one of the issues I frequently come up when I discuss sustainability with executives and of course with consumers, but also with my students is that uh, lack of confidence in their relevance in the grand scheme of things. Uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, common answers is, what can I do? You know, it's not my problem, it's not my fault. Well, if you think uh, that you're too small to make a difference, well, try sleeping with a mosquito. Thank you very much.